Hey, welcome to this fourth and final video of this little Maxwell's Equations mini-series. Um, as you've probably guessed, in this video we're going to derive Maxwell's fourth equation. And um, so Maxwell's third equation talked about the curl of the electric field. So it's no surprise that this equation is going to look at the curl of the magnetic field and what exactly influences this curl. So um, just like the previous videos, whenever we wanted to come up and derive a Maxwell, one of Maxwell's equations, we usually fell back on a law discovered by another physicist. Um, in this case, we're, oh, we're going to have to rely on Ampere's law um, to sort of come to the conclusion of Maxwell's fourth equation. So Ampere's law says that if we have any um, loop in space, and we look at the magnetic field circulating in the direction of the loop. So we don't know what's causing the field. Um, just say there happens to be some magnetic field vectors in the space you're in that happen to be tangential to this loop at different points. If we look at how much of the magnetic field acts in a circulating direction to this loop, that number is always proportional to the amount of current going through the loop. And this is just a very general way of saying whenever we have a current, there's going to be a magnetic field circulating around it. So this here is the current. It, it doesn't have to be coming straight out of the loop. It could be at a different angle. As long as it's coming out of the loop, we can say that it contributes a, a bit to this magnetic field circulate in the direction of the loop. And this might seem a little hand wavy, so let's look at the equation um, for Ampere's law. And the equation for Ampere's law says the loop integral, because we're dealing with loops, of the magnetic field over dl, which is a tiny bit of the loop, so that could be our dl, is equal to mu naught, which is the permeability of free space. It's a number that tells you how easy it is for a magnetic field to flow through the space you're in, times i, the current. So this here is how much how much our um, B field is circulating around the loop we're looking at. And we can see that it's clearly proportional because this is a constant to our current. And the loop doesn't need to be a circle, it can be any old loop. Um, but for the, for the purposes of Maxwell's fourth equation, it's probably easier to write I as the surface integral of this new quantity J. Uh, ds, where j is the current density, and if you haven't uh, encountered the current density before, say you have um, a wire cross-sectional area A with a current I flowing through it, current density is exactly what you think, it's just the current over the area, and a lot of times we like to think of current density as a vector in the direction of con conventional current, so we put a little L cap there, where L is the um, direction we're taking as is positive. So great, we know Ampere's law, but do we though? Let's see if it works. And this is going to be a bit of a counter example. We're going to look at a circuit that's broken. So you might be thinking, hey, it's a broken circuit. There's no, no current's going to flow through it. And you'd be right in thinking that, but there wouldn't be much current flowing through it. You see, this here is basically the same thing as a capacitor system, um, where our air gaps that are electric, um, we just have a really small cross-sectional area because we're just looking at wires. But this is basically a capacitor system, and we know with capacitors that there actually is a current in the beginning. So that's I time, and that current just decays away really quickly and um, tends to zero. So initially there is a current flowing. So if there is a current flowing, then we know that there has to be a magnetic field. So say we have, again, we're looking at conventional current. Um, so if we have a conventional current flowing, there has to be a magnetic field circulating like that. Um, and that makes sense, current implies magnetic field. But in this little area here, there's no current, um, as in there's no movement of charge, but there still is an electric field. So it, it gets you thinking, 
well in the in this region here this this current or this double integral goes goes straight down to zero so does that mean the magnetic field around any loop we look there goes down to zero too well let's think about this so say we had a loop here that there definitely be a magnetic field there definitely be a magnetic field if you place the loop here well we can say experiments have been done is there is a magnetic field the reason being is there's still an electric field there so is Ampere's law wrong? How, how is there an electric field? Well, if we look at the individual capacitor plates, um, a charge actually accumulates here, a positive charge. Again, we're thinking of, we're thinking of conventional current. And a negative, an equal and opposite negative charge would accumulate here. And it it's sort of like a positive charge comes, deposits itself here, and causes positive charges here to repel. So it's almost like a positive charge moved across this gap, but it's like there's a virtual current. And that's basically what Maxwell came up with. He came up with a correction to Ampere's law. And we're gonna look at the correction right now by considering a Gaussian surface that encloses this, um, this little first plate here. And for, um, for simplicity, we're going to make the front of the surface flat. So it's a terrible drawing, but this is meant to be like a flat uh, circle. So using Gauss's law, we know that the only electric flux would be between the capacitor plates. So uh, and you can probably see why I chose a flat surface for a Gaussian surface at this region, because then, um, the electric flux is pretty easy to calculate because it's pretty um it's parallel to the area vectors here so um the electric flux in uh for this surface and we'll call the surface um uh, d we'll call the surface d so the electric flux would be the double integral over a closed surface D of E dotted with a tiny bit of area and we know that that's equal to the charge so that's Q the enclosed charge within D divided by epsilon naught okay that makes sense um, but we were saying that there was some sort of mysterious virtual current here and well, if there's a virtual current that has to be associated with the rate at which the charge is flowing through this gap, um, and we'll call that dq dt. So remember, dq dt is a real current at these parts of the circuit, but when it gets to this bit here, th there's no actual charge moving through the gap. But positive charges are being deposited on this side, and positive charges are being taken away from this side. So it looks like there's some sort of current flowing. So dq dt is a measure of this sort of change in charge we're seeing. And uh, we can work out what dq dt is because we know what q is from Gauss's law. So dq dt, after a bit of rearrangement, is just epsilon naught times the time derivative of the double integral we just looked at okay um the maths looks a bit complicated but we're getting somewhere because now this term here is basically the imaginary displacement current the virtual current um we were just talking about that was causing charges to go from one plate to another plate so let's see if we can include that in um ampere's law so now ampere's law would look like dl equals to mu naught times well we have our first current which is caused by actual charges moving through the wire plus this new current epsilon naught time derivative double integral of e dot with ds and this is a closed integral over d 
but because we only look at this surface here um, that's the surface we're looking at in this integral so um, what that means is the double integral over the closed surface d of e dot ds is equal to the integral of e dot ds um, let's call this loopy surface just loop um, so this is our loop because electric flux doesn't flow through any other part of d okay so both of these double integrals are over the area enclosed by a loop and that loop is the same loop as this loop okay so now we've got this new version of ampere's law and this is actually called ampere's law with maxwell's correction and this here is maxwell's correction term so now we've got this equation linking a loop integral to an area integral and you probably see where i'm going with this we can use stokes theorem to convert the left hand side of this into an area integral as well on the left hand side is now the double integral over the area enclosed by the loop so the same area as the right hand side of the curl of b dotted with ds and that is equal to mu naught double integral of j dot ds plus mu naught epsilon naught and we're going to push this time derivative into the integral of e field dot with ds and what we have here is a double integral equal to another double integral because we haven't set any restrictions on the surface besides it being a loop we can equate the integrands and get Maxwell's fourth equation which says the curve of B is equal to mu naught epsilon naught de dt plus mu naught j and this is a really powerful equation if we just look into what it means so it tells us that the curl of the magnetic field so how much it spins or curls around space depends upon the rate of change of the electric field so how much the electric field is changing with time um, similar to Maxwell's uh, third equation which said the curl of the electric depended on how much um, B was changing with time but there's an extra term here there is this term which says the curl also depends on the current flowing through space itself so it depends on both the changing electric field and the movement of charges this term wasn't there in maxwell's third equation because ma magnetic monopoles didn't ex well they don't exist or we haven't found them yet but this extra term here appears only in maxwell's um fourth equation and talks about current density and the fact that how moving charges through space can influence the curl of the magnetic field. That's all and I hope you enjoyed the series.